Good day or night wherever you are, this is Miss Andrea with the Paris Library. Today we will be doing a spoiler-free review for the Six of Crows duology by Lee Bardugo. I will talk about the book while creating a themed collage for this series in my personal bullet journal. Hopefully this is more entertaining than just listening to me talk. Okay, so today we are talking about a very popular series, Six of Crows. To save time, I will read the Goodreads synopsis for the book before getting into the review. This is the synopsis for the first book in the duology, not the second book. Kidderdam, a bustling hub of international trade where anything can be had for the right price. And no one knows that better than criminal prodigy Kaz Brecker. Kaz is offered a chance to a deadly heist that could make him rich beyond his wildest dreams, but he can't pull it off alone. A convict with a thirst for revenge, a sharpshooter who can't walk away from a wager, a runaway with a privileged past, a spy known as the Wraith, a heart trender using her magic to survive the slums, a thief with a gift for unlikely escapes, Kaz's crew is the only thing that might stand between the world and destruction if they don't kill each other first. And that concludes the synopsis on Goodreads for the first book in the duology. The Six of Crows duology is perfect for the fall and winter because the atmosphere and scenery within the novels are either snowy, rainy, or dark alleys and cemeteries. Not only that, but dark fantasy fits the fall and winter season really well. The Six of Crows duology takes place in a dark, gritty fantasy world created by Lee Bardugo called the Grishaverse. As of this video, there are three ongoing series within this fantasy world, which is full of magic, politics, and various fictional cultures with their own traditions, religions, and languages. Both books within the Six of Crows duology are heist novels that follow a diverse cast of characters in which the reader gets to know and love as the story progresses. Each character in this multi-perspective series goes through their own trials and growth, so much so that none of the characters are the same by the end of the series in the best of way. Do be aware that this is a darker, grittier fantasy than most YA novels, and the characters ride a middle line of morally gray decisions with ultimately good intentions. Please read the content and trigger warnings in the description of this video and in other reviews before you read this series if you are sensitive to a specific kind of content or just to know what to expect. There will also be a link to Common Sense Media for parents and guardians to utilize when making the decision about this book for a younger reader. Last bit of information before we get started, whenever I am stating my personal opinion about this series, the screen will do this, so that you know it's my opinion and not part of the recommendation. Everyone has differing opinions on books, so keep that in mind and make decisions about your own enjoyment for yourself. I hope you come out of this video knowing if you want to read this book or not, and feel free to let us know your thoughts in the comments. Now on to the breakdown. Let's get into some of the specific aspects of this series broken down into character, atmosphere, writing, plot, intrigue, logic, and personal enjoyment. Let's start with characters. The characters in this series either have a mutual liking or tolerance for one another that is rough around the edges, or they dislike one another and communicate primarily through banter and sarcasm. On the other hand, behind the banter is a group of characters who have found family and love in one another, even if they have a funny way of showing it. The characters are definitely the center point of this story, with the world and plot to follow. Not only are the characters funny, but their individual growth in this multi-perspective story is highly appealing to most readers. Each character has a battle of their own along with the collective battle of the group, and the reader gets to watch them struggle and ultimately overcome said battle. Now, it is important to be aware of the kind of story this is. The angsty, dramatic relationships between characters are generally aimed towards a teenage audience, so if you are an adult, go into this book with a mindset ready for fast, angsty fun, and dramatic relationships. Now, let's talk diversity. The story has several characters of color with commentary on racism that parallel our world, although it may not be immediately obvious to every reader. There is also a same-sex relationship that develops, but that is really it as far as LGBTQIA+ representation. There is a bit of disability and chronic pain representation and several instances where mental illness, PTSD, and addiction are tastefully discussed in this duology, which is a breath of fresh air for the genre, but may not cater to every reader. Lastly, there are some discussions on conflicting cultures and religion that are relevant to our world today. That includes religious diversity as well. 
In conclusion, this story may feel diverse to some but not others. Each reader will need to decide for themselves how they feel about the diversity of this series. My favorite character is Inez. She is such a boss lady and I adore her sheer awesomeness. I personally love the discussions of religion, PTSD, and drug addiction in this series as well because YA tends to avoid these heavier topics even though they are important aspects of life for teenagers to read about and feel represented in. Let's move on to atmosphere. Lee Bardugo has created the Greaserverse in such a vast and realistically dirty world full of lore and politics. The politics, magic system, and numerous cultures create an immersive experience for the reader that leaves them yearning for more. This is probably why Bardugo has created several spin-off series and companion novels within the Greaserverse collection. This world, its lore, history, and diverse peoples are addicting. The dark atmosphere and angsty relationships in this duology will not be for everyone, but when the right angsty mood settles in, this duology satisfies said mood like no other. Now with that said, this duology may not live up to an avid high fantasy lover's expectations, especially those who read adult high fantasy. Keep in mind, this is a character-driven YA heist novel. The characters and their relationships are the center of this story not the world building. There is a decent amount of world building and lore in all of Lee Bardugo's books within the Grishaverse, but it is only impressive for a YA novel, not really adult high fantasy. From a high fantasy lover's perspective, this series would leave a lot to be desired of the magic system and world building, but that is not the purpose of this book. This is about the characters and gang politics, which are highly satisfying if the reader knows what to expect. I love character-driven stories with a fantasy backdrop. Let's talk about the writing. Not only are the world and characters addicting, but Lee Bardugo's writing is well developed and highly immersive. These books seem to fly by while reading them, and the atmosphere immerses the reader the entire time as if the reader was there in the story with the characters. The writing is gritty, like the world, and the banter realistic enough to feel like a real life conversation. At no point is the reader pulled out of the story because the pacing slowed or quickened, Lastly, the characters feel like real people that you'd befriend when you're young. Plus, watching them grow is touching. Bardugo has really established her ability to write well with this duology. Now, in regards to plot, the series centers around a gang of young people pulling off heists and getting revenge. It's hard to talk about the plot of this series without spoiling it, so just know that the action and battles are there, but the focus of these books is on the characters. The first book, Six of Crows, has a more heist-centered plot, while the second book, Crooked Kingdom, focuses more on a revenge plot and character development. I personally found the plot of the first book to be more interesting than the second book. On the other hand, I much prefer the twists and turns of the second book, along with the progression of the character's development. In regards to intrigue, hand in hand with atmosphere, this world that Bardugo has created is highly addicting for many reasons. The plot is quick, the characters are funny, and the world and magic system are well done. There are countless twists and thrilling heist moments throughout this duology that keep the readers on the edges of their seats. Even if the reader knows where the story is going or who will end up with who, the journey there is still intriguing enough to keep them going with curiosity of how things will get to said end points. Okay, here's the deal with logic. This is a YA heist novel with a very young cast of characters who have some pretty remarkable skills for their ages. This duology requires some suspension of disbelief, but not so much as to leave the reader questioning the plausibility of the plot and characters. Just don't think too hard about the logistics behind a genius gang leader of teenagers who outsmarts an entire political system and pulls off impossible heists. Although their efforts are not without significant struggle, the characters go through a lot of failure and hardships to get where they need to be. And for enjoyment, this is all up to you. If you think any of this sounded interesting to you, then I would definitely recommend giving it a try. I do not think you need to read the first book and the second book to enjoy the series. You could just read the first book. And that concludes our recommendation review of this duology, Six of Crows, by Lee Bardugo. This is the final journal spread that you just saw, based on the aesthetics of the book. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a comment. It can be as simple as an emoji, or just simply like this video, that helps a lot. Please also consider subscribing to our channel if you want more aesthetic journaling book reviews. This was Miss Andrea with the Paris Library. I hope you have a good day or night wherever you are, and I'll see you again next time. Bye bye!